Hello again, and welcome. I'm going to uh, work in my orange blossom journal. And I'm starting at the back of this book and working forward so that I don't distort it too badly. And um, I probably should have done this a little bit sooner when making an altered book. You can kind of throw out the, um, the shape of the book quite easily if you don't uh, use that little trick. So here I am late to the party, but uh, I'd be, I'm doing it now. I have picked these one, two, five pieces out of my little uh, envelope that used to be a little blue basket, but I have separated these items by color, and uh, I found all of these pieces in this first pink and red uh, section here in this uh, folder, which made it very easy and fun to find. These two uh, pieces of collage are muted. This is not uh, my camera. This is the way this um, flower looks. And this is an old piece of um, cleanup paper that I sprayed ages and ages ago. And I thought the coloration here uh, with the orange and yellow were just wonderful. And yes, that in those of you who are able to hear it, we're having some um, afternoon uh, Florida thunder because it's uh, 3 o'clock. And then I picked these papers and I used my new handy dandy uh, corner um, rounder on here. But before I do this, I'm going to give this, uh, these two pages, a little coat of this um, uh, Finnebear's uh, gesso, clear gesso. This gesso is wonderful because it is not gritty. The first maybe six or so uh, spreads that I did in this, I used a, um, uh, I think a Liquitex clear gesso, and it was so gritty. And then I found out um, through a diligent watching and listening of other people's YouTubes um, that uh, the clear gesso is uh, the best for not being gritty is this brand, so I'm going to uh, put a little of it down now. And let that dry because I'm thinking I might put a little bit of an undercoat of uh, watercolor uh, on here. So, I'm going to uh, dampen this up, my brush up just a little bit. This is an older brush that I keep for um, acrylics. And I'm going to uh, just go over the uh, Japanese character sections on these pages and just lay down a little bit of uh, this clear gesso to save. to save these pages from, uh, from the water. And these pages are uh, two pages glued together with my Extreme, Elmer's Extreme. And over here. Right, that should do. And these should flatten out when they dry, and when it dries, because um, uh, they're uh, buckling a little bit now because of the uh, amount of liquid, even in this clear gesso. This mission accomplished. I'm going to uh, set this aside.
dry this a little bit. to protect these two papers. not to tell that there is any gesso, clear gesso, on those papers. I'm going to uh, have to go and get some water, which I forgot to do. Uh, I will be returning, and I think I'm going to use um, either my uh, Purple Lake and Mauve, and uh, As background colors. I'm thinking I'm also going to want to use another color so while I'm uh, fetching water I'll get out my other uh, my other watercolor palette. I have found the colors that I want to use all in one palette. This is my mostly Daniel Smith paints and uh, I'm going to use these two which are not Daniel Smith but I was looking for uh, Moon Glow. I love that color. Also a little bit of um, Rose of Ultramarine. That might end up on there uh, also. So I have my my brush <coughs> ready. I'm just going to, um, I think I'm going to use a little bit of the, uh, of the Moon Glow because it has a beautiful grayish color to it. I'm going to uh, lay some of that over here. Spread it down, almost dry brush it down a little bit. And I'm thinking just a little bit here. All right, now, over here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to really just put on some colors that I think will do the trick. And they seem to be uh, doing nicely on that uh, clear gesso. Have a little, uh, have a little moon glow over here. I'm just anxious to uh, add some uh, background color here. And a little 
this one over here also. Mixed in. And a little bit more moon glow over here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop because this has uh, has to have a chance to dry and I'm going to let it air dry before I put my uh, pieces of uh, uh, attach my collage bits I'm uh, I'm going to watch this to let some of the top water uh, evaporate a bit and then I might add a little bit of um, uh, a drying to a heating tool to dry this. I'm not too sure, but I'll be finding out soon. Well, I'm using my uh, Muji pen, 0.25, to just suggest the placement. of some lines. Now, I have not quite decided where I'm going with them. I just put the little bit over here. I haven't decided what's going to happen with them, but they're there. I've committed myself. The die is cast. Now, there is some black lining here. I want to play that up over there so that I'm glad that this is here. to uh, have a think. Well, I'm back and ready to uh, share the uh, things that I did that you've seen m me and many other artists do very often. I used my Muji uh, 0 0.25 pen, which is so deliciously fine. I use that to uh, go around the outside of the pieces of uh, collage that were added to this page and very gently and lightly I went around this these two pieces I had lightly marked on the areas for these sprays uh, in the Muji and I decided to go back over them and darken them and in order to um, accomplish that I used my uh, Signo Uniball uh, 207 and then for the leaves I used my pit pen um, fine F and I just uh, drew on leaf shapes here and some over here and then the next step uh, was for me to go into those leaves with um, a little bit of uh, these two Le Pen colors olive green and green into these leaves just to give them a little bit a little bit of color and then I had a good think and decided that really what these, um, what these tendrils needed was some uh, gold. So um, I went back to my 
uh, delicious uh, Stanford uh, Uniball gel pen and put on uh, dots and I think you're able to see them. Yes, there they are. So, all of those processes are uh, complete, but now I'm going to try uh, Tulip Glitter Dimensional Fabric Paint, which says Crystal Sparkles, which means they are just clear sparkles. And uh, I learned uh, about these goodies from, again, from Linda Israel, who um, talked about the fact that, as you can see, Hobby Lobby was $3.99 for this large bottle, and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to give these a try out. I can actually see some of the sparkles in the uh, in the uh, paint tip already. Now let me see if I can get that moving, or am I going to have to uh, execute it with a uh, Yes, I think it's going to need a talk with a, uh, a needle. Needle foraging. The needle, the needle worked. So, if you will notice, there are some marks on some of the petals on this flower. And I'm going to try adding some of this glitter where I see the marks. I'm going to wait now to see what happens there. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to use my two Ceram Coat colors, Sweet Pea and Hy Hydrangea Pink, which are the very light shades. In fact, the lightest that I have in my stash. And I'm going to add some more color to the tendrils. Not so much, but something. Now, in order to do this, now in order to do this, I used the tip end of two of my paintbrushes. I have been doing this for eon years and uh, it works a treat and uh, I first have to see what size uh, what size dot I want on here it could be either one but my very finest is on this uh, this baby so let's see what happens No, decisions, decisions. I think that's large enough. Oh yes, as that uh, paint dries, I'm starting to see, I'm starting to see the um, glitter. But now I'm going to uh, have fun plunking down some pink and then I'm going to mix it with some of the lilac. 
just not too many. Contrast in color is uh, working on my side. And now I'm going to uh, go back and do the uh, hydrangea close to the pink. And the reason that I have always, always done dots like this is because you can put them close together and if you're quite careful and because they are acrylic paint they will not uh, they will not coalesce they will not make up a, a pink purple blob Now, and yes, some of these, some of these little dots up here are drying, and yes, I do see the glitter in there. I wish you could see it, but so now I know that you certainly don't need to see me do all of these tendrils. And I'm going to use the larger tip on this side, and uh, I will be back to finish up. I'm going to try to show you how the glitter is showing as this paint dries. Oh, I think I'm in love. Isn't that just too, too good? And here are the pink, light pink and very light purple. Let's call them berries, mixed in with the, um, with the golden ones. And now I'm going to look at this other page and see what I can do With this, uh, with this glitter paint. I'm thinking this little, this little goodie right here might benefit quite nicely from uh, an application. I can see that this is going to be removed and I'm going to uh, apply one of these no clog writing caps from a scrap perfect similar to what I have on my uh, glue Well, that just decided to get crazy, didn't it? 
this tip is so out of there. Let's see what, yes, that might just work. And just a little bit more over here. along here. And I think I'll stop right there because I'm afraid that this um, this tip and I are going to have a, a conversation in a little bit with pliers and that puppy. So, I do want to show you again how pretty how pretty that effect is. Some of the larger larger bits are still wet, but the smaller ones are just glimmering. wish I could. Oh my, yes, I can start to see it starting to show there. Well, thank you, Linda. If you have enjoyed sharing this time with me, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share with a friend, and I would so appreciate your subscribing to my channel. Let's have another closer look. There is that uh, pen. This is also becoming a very good friend. I put a little bit of uh, my uh, Muji just on the dark bits and I uh, darkened a little bit in her eye since that's she was peeking through. By now.